welcome to our Realmsmith Beholder series. Hey everyone, welcome to part four. Now I know it's been a little while since part three. We actually lost some footage and had to re-record some stuff. But here we are, and in this part, we're gonna teach you how to add some special effects to that beholder, including some object source lighting, both from the front and the back, and add some drool to that toothy maw to make it look as much as possible as the cover of the monster's manual. Strap in, here we go. All right, so what we need first is the Beholder miniature that we've been painting all throughout the series. Uh, an airbrush for some of the OSL, if you like. A set of Vallejo hobby brushes. Some tacky glue, a typical white glue will work best as well. Uh, some hobby sand, super glue, and the typical painting accessories like a paper towel, paint palette, and water pot. As far as paints go, we'll need black, tan, gloss varnish, cold gray, glacier blue, dead white, red ink, stonewall gray, black wash, heavy sienna, cayman green, hot orange, orange fire, gold yellow, and moon yellow. From the game airline, we'll need magic blue and electric blue and dead white. And from the environmental effects line, we'll need industrial mud. First step for the islands is to add a little black along the edge to stop light refracting. Then we take some crazy glue and we add it to the edges very, very carefully, not to get it on the actual eye lens itself. And then we take our beholder and we press that eye lens right into the socket. Now, sometimes it takes a little doing. And so what we try and do here is press gently until it kind of snaps into place. Again, trying not to get crazy glue anywhere. Then we're gonna go in and just touch up around the eye, some of the edges, around the eyelid, and on the lower eyelid as well with tan. Next, we're gonna take some gloss varnish and we're gonna add it to all the little eyeballs on the eye stalks, as well as to the gums, both top and bottom. Once dried, it'll look slimy and wet. Now to start basing the miniature, we're gonna add some crazy glue to the bottom of the miniature along its gray base. Then we're gonna take the black round base that is provided and press it firmly onto that, letting it adhere a little bit. And then we're gonna take some clamps and we're gonna clamp the base of the beholder to the black base. Once that crazy glue is dry, we're then gonna base coat the bottom of the base with cold gray. Then, uh, just to add a little bit of viscosity and, and something for the glue in the next step to adhere to, we're gonna add industrial mud, which is from the environmental effects line from Vallejo. Uh, we're not gonna see a lot of this in the end, but really it, it creates a solid base to build from. Then we're gonna add tacky glue, and you can use hobby glue or white glue or whatever you prefer on this. We just find tacky glue has the right level of thickness and adhesion for the sand in the next step. And then you're gonna to wanna to use an old brush, uh, not something that you're too attached to, uh, to kind of move the glue around the base to cover all of the surface so that the sand can adhere. Now before the white glue dries, we wanna make sure that we take some hobby sand and we're gonna sprinkle that hobby sand all over the base and then press it down firmly onto the white glue. And you wanna mix a fine sand and coarse sand 
so that it gives some awesome texture. Once you're done, kind of tap off the rest and then wipe off any sand on the edge. And then once the glue is dry, then we're going to base coat the sand using cold gray. Then once the cold gray is dry, we're gonna add a black wash. And this will just add depth and contrast to the base. Make sure you don't get it on the clear stand that holds up the beholder though. Once the wash is dry, then we're gonna give a generous dry brush of Stonewall Gray. And this will bring out all the detail and the texture. We're gonna continue by adding some earthy tones to the base, starting with heavy sienna. We're just gonna stipple it kind of in between the cracks and the crevices on the base. And then with some Cayman Green as well. And this is just gonna make the base tonally look a bit more realistic. Then we're gonna finish off the base with another dry brush of Stonewall Gray. Now we're gonna be adding object source lighting from two different directions. The first one is from firelight. Now, if you look at the cover of the Monster's Manual, you'll notice that there's kind of maybe a torch light or something of that effect, kind of casting a warm, fiery glow on the front part of the beholder's face. And so that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna add red ink to kind of apply a really solid base that we can start from. The nice thing about the ink is it's semi-transparent. And so you're gonna get still the textures and you're gonna get the colors under it from all the work that we've already done. The key to adding any OSL effect is to make sure that you work out the direction that the light is traveling from or that secondary light source is coming from. And so what we're doing here is we're adding that red ink to all the kind of surfaces that are closest to that light source. So they'll be more intense in the front and they'll gradually get softer in the back. Our second kind of mid-tone is hot orange. We're gonna add hot orange within the areas that we've already base coated with the red ink. But we're focusing on the parts that again are closest to that source of light. Then once again, what we're gonna do is add a further highlight with orange fire. And again, we're focusing on the highest areas. It's gonna be a smaller sliver or a smaller highlight than we're using on the hot orange. We're gradually getting lighter with smaller areas. And as you can see here on these scales, I'm just catching the edge of the bony protrusions.
then it's on to gold yellow for the next highlight. Once again, a smaller area within the orange fire that we've already done closest to the source of the firelight. And it's important to remember that the areas of highlight are getting smaller as they recede to the back of the miniature. And so the areas in the front will be a little bit larger, a little bit more pronounced, and then each scale further back will get less gold yellow. Then we're on to moon yellow, and you get the idea here. Basically in this area, even smaller than the area that was the gold yellow and closer to the source of the firelight. And we're really bringing out the teeth here because we want the teeth to be brighter because their base color was also brighter than, for example, the scales, which were kind of a dark brown. And we're just catching the edge of areas on this. In most cases, especially on the scales, we're just doing dots at this point. And finally, we're just gonna add dead white as a final highlight. And in this case, we're doing thin lines, a bit more on the teeth, because we want them to be pronounced, and then basically dots on the closest edge of each scale. Now this is unfortunately where we lost some of our footage, but what we did is with the airbrush, we did three consecutive coats, each one a little smaller of magic blue, electric blue, and then dead white from the airline. Again, focusing from the direction of the moonlight. And then we went in with some black wash just to create some contrast in the areas that are kind of washed out from the airbrush in all the crevices on the back of the mini. Then we're gonna add Glacier Blue as an edge highlight. Again, focusing on the areas that are closest to the moonlight and would be the brightest.
And finally, we're adding fine highlights of dead white within the glacier blue. final detail we're going to add is a little drool using a glue gun. So we're going to anchor the glue on one tooth and stretch it across the other and kind of swipe it off on the bottom tooth to add that string of glue. Then on the other one on the other side, what we're going to do is anchor it on one, pull it over to the one next to it, and then pull it down. Thank you for watching part four. Now, first off, I want to thank everyone for being a part of our community. We couldn't do this without you. Now for our special members of the realm, part five, we're gonna show you how to add LEDs to all the eye stocks on the beholder and their really cool decorative base to hold the battery pack in. Now in order to become a member of the realm, you can head to www.realmsmith.tv and you can sign up for $5 a month. And that's just something to help us do this and continue to make videos for everybody. If you like this video as usual, make sure that you like, that you comment, that you share, and that you subscribe to our channel by hitting that little bell icon. We'll see you again soon. Take care.